Hello. In this video, I will discuss the design of a memory. The concept is built on what we discussed in class. Um, that is a basic module that is used, element that is used to store information was a D-latch. That is a D-latch which uh, can be symbolically represented uh, in this way. That is, it has a single input, D, a write enable, and its output or its current state, if you will, uh, is governed by how we set D and M, write enable. So we saw that the truth table looks something like this. That is, if we have an input D, if the write enable is a zero, then uh, we say that it doesn't matter what D is, it's gonna, the A is gonna hold. That is, it's the quiet state as an A persists as whatever it previously was. Uh, whereas when the write enable is one, a zero here will make the A change to zero no matter what it was. A one here will make it change to one no matter what it previously was. So this was our D lag. So we'll use this symbol from here onwards to understand or to represent a D latch. So um, now that we know what a D latch does, that is it, it, it is used as an element to store a single bit of information. So now we're gonna join them together to form a memory. So here is the design for a, a four by two memory. What I mean by that is that the address space of this, this is the address space of this memory and this is the addressability of this memory. Actually, we'll make it a four by three memory to make it uh, more seen a little more general. So the address space is four, which says that those are the number of locations in this memory. So we can visualize it like this. So it's a memory module with one, two, three and four locations so one two three four locations which is the address space and it holds in each location one two three spaces in each location so that's one two three one two three and one two three for a total of 12 bits so we'll design this memory module uh, as it would appear in a real system in a system uh, where where such a memory is used. So let's uh, look at how we would organize this. So first off, we have our memory address register, which we said is going to be two bits long. The reason is because for an address space of four, we need exactly two bits to represent four locations, and and then we have our memory data register. Will I'll show you the memory data register in just a second. The memory data register is going to have three locations in it because the data that I am going to read from memory or write to memory is only three bits at any time. So the memory data register, I'm going to draw it here, but I'm going to wait till I draw the whole circuit. So for now, this is my memory data register with multiple bits in it. So now uh, we know that of our, uh, the actions to memory can be either a read operation or a write operation. So read operation or a write operation. So we'll represent that by zero or one. So this is my read write line if you will. So these three things together uh, allow me to manipulate the memory. When I want to read from memory I'll put the address here and I'll put a zero on this line and I will read the contents of whatever the address is. If I put a one zero here, then I'm re reading this location, so three bits from that location are gonna come into MDR. Similarly, if I'm writing to memory, if I'm, let's say, writing to the location three, 
then I would put an address which is <coughs> one zero so uh, that would be this address because it's zero 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 one one zero one one and I would put a address one one zero here and then I would write what I want to into MDR and the read write line will be at a one and then that content will go into location three so we'll see how that works in just a second so our building block for our memory then is uh, so here are our, we know that each of these locations corresponds to a DLAT so first I'm just going to draw one one the first first column if you will so here is my DLAT for the very first uh, column of each of my memory location so we'll, so that way I can extend it to any number of columns so that's my second and I'm gonna give up give myself enough space here that is third and that's my fourth so the first thing I notice about my design is that I would need a decoder of uh, more specifically a 2x4 decoder because at any point in time I only manipulate one of these memory locations so here is my decoder which as its input two inputs if you will so this is a 2x4 decoder which at any point in time, so I add the inputs to this decoder then are the lower bit and the higher bit of my memory address and it's going to have as its output four lines and the four lines correspond to my four memory locations. So my first goal then is to let's let's tackle the the case of right first and what we'll do is we'll say remember that the D latch so this D latch has two inputs a D and a right enable so this input then is basically going to come from from this bit because I'm first designing this so I'm going to say this bit comes from here now it is the same bit so it, it, depending upon which location I'm writing to this is going to be available to all of them so I'll connect it there I'll connect it there I'll connect it there I'll connect it there but obviously I'm not writing to all the locations I'm only writing to that location which has been enabled or that has been chosen among all the locations and the choice is made by the memory address register so so um, my my second step then is let's say I'm trying to write to this location I notice that this line is going to be on and it's a right so I take these two inputs and I'm going to give them to an AND gate and this becomes my right enable so what this is saying is if I choose the right enable to be one or the right line to be if the right line is one and if I know that I'm writing to the first memory location then I know that this line will be asserted these all will be dis uh, are disabled and this AND gate will have both ones and so the right enable is on so whatever I put here is going to go into this as its current state whatever A is so by the same token then I'm going to take this right enable and I'm saying that this in turn will only serve as the right enable for this guy and similarly this coming down here that's uh, coming down here will be the right enable for this guy this is the right enable here that's the right enable here that's its D input that's its D input and similarly the last guy has his right enable 
I'm just going to be that. So now, now the read operation, so the write operation is if, if I had multiple bits, let's say I had more than one bit, so let's say my MDR was in this case three bits, then all I would do is I would repeat this, the same circuitry and let's draw this circuitry which is this circuitry right here. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it. So let's move this guy a little and give us enough room. So I want a lot of room. And this is my second memory location. And I'm going to copy another one and I'm going to move it. And this is my third, third bit of each of the memory locations. And let's make our connections to make sure we understand how this works. So it's the same right because that's the right that's the one that's saying that this particular this particular memory location has been picked to be written to and similarly and then this is the actual bit itself and this same thing is now going to feed here as well and this same thing is going to feed here as well and this is going to be my third location which is that and similarly this will come from here to here as well as to here and similarly this one will come from here to here as well as to here so if I had for instance a value let's say I had a value 1 0 1 in this and I had decided to write and let's say I have a 0 1 as the address then what we know is that this is gonna have a 1 all of these are gonna have so in fact this is gonna have a 1 sorry 1 and all of these will have zeros because this is the location 0 1 so this will have a 0 and this will have a 0 and what in turn will happen is because one of the inputs to this AND gate is a 0 all these will be zeros and this will be a only this will be a 1 so that write enable comes here and the same write enable goes there and write enable goes there so whatever is the input here remember when the write enable is 1 the input to the D becomes a state so this one will have a 1 now in it a 0 now in it and a 1 now in it that's my that's the state of my system now if I were to change it and said well let's say my input was a, um, was to a different location let's say this was a 1 1 and my values were a uh, 0 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. So it's no longer these guys. No longer these guys, but it's 0, 1, 1. Then now we will notice that this is a 0, this is a 0, this is a 0, but this is a 1 because that's the 1, 1 line. And similarly, this is a 0, 0, 0, 1, which means that only this write enable will be, will have a 1, and the rest of the, this whole row has its write enable 1, which means whatever is on these inputs is going to go in. So this is going to have a 0, a 1, and a 1 in its input. So that is our read operator, uh, write operation. 